temperature of the product. Innovation, trying new things, being on the frontier of new ideas, has been and will always be a key in the success of Anheuser-Busch. The wrong kind of a style. He looked very sluggish early in the fight, standing in front of the jab of Michael Moore. You can't do that with Michael Moore. You have to find a way to get on the inside, move left, double up with the, with the hook, to the body and then the head. Evander finally solved that and uh, won the prize. This fight was pretty much even, Al. You had it scored even going into the fifth round. And right. after a couple of 10-7 rounds, we were sitting here even saying that for somebody who was up so <laughs> much in points, he seemed so vulnerable, Evander Holyfield. Yeah, and I think that the things that John alluded to are part of the reason and the fact that Michael Moore even in those rounds when he was getting knocked down, would occasionally throw some really beautiful combinations, and at one point I think even stunned Holyfield with a right hook. And we've seen Evander Holyfield, as in the Riddick, third Riddick bow fight, be a powerful fighter and then get tired in fights. But ultimately, it was that warrior heart of uh, Evander Holyfield that really did the job. And I'll tell you what, let no one ever, 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 ever say that Evander Holyfield isn't a big puncher. He showed it again here tonight. Is there any reason why, John, you might think that Evander Holyfield just refused to go left in this fight and not double up on that left? Well, the only theory I could come up with to refute what Al's saying, and I still believe Al is right about fighting a southpaw that way, is that Michael Moore is a natural right-handed puncher. He's a converted southpaw. So his power punch is the right hand. I think Evander felt by moving to the right, he would stay away from Michael Moore's right. But really, it was a situation where he was standing in front of Michael Moore. That was the wrong thing to do. It took Evander a while to figure it out. And also, it took him a while to get that second win. You saw Evander bothered by the cut, kept pawing at it, the blood coming down. Uh, it looked like he was, being, uh, he was going through a fatigue uh, session there for a while. He was slowing down. But again, the heart, the chin, the stamina. Uh, and I guess by the grace of God, if Evander Holyfield were here right now, he won the fight. <laughs> well, Vegas is known for its buffets, and tonight the dish was served cold. Evander Holyfield likes to have sweet revenge. Once again, he avenges a loss earlier in his career in a title fight. Riddick Bowe, he lost to him in November of 92. A year later, he came back and won. Michael Moore, as we, of course, you know, coming into this fight, beat Evander Holyfield back in 1994. So Holyfield becomes only the second heavyweight champion to avenge two title losses. The other one, Muhammad Ali, and Ben already had something in common with Muhammad Ali, already won the title three separate times. So now, what is up next for next for each fighter, Al? Uh, what's up next for Vander Holyfield? Is he going to fight uh, Lennox Lewis or Vaughn Bean, perhaps? <laughs> well, I think we can rule out Vaughn Bean, and that's just a guess on my part. I'll tell you what, Vander Holyfield has Lennox Lewis in his sights, and if the boxing public doesn't want to embrace that fight, then they're really crazy off this one. We told you, folks. We told you this was going to be a shootout, and it was exactly that. I think Vander Holyfield and Lewis is a terrific fight, and let me add, even though I know John may deal with it, Michael Moore showed us tonight he's a very marketable heavyweight under the right circumstances. I have to give him credit. He did some good things in this fight, even in losing. Well, what is up next for Moore, if you think? Well, that's a good question. First of all, Michael Moore, unless he gets into a mandatory position where he's a number one contender, where a champion is forced to fight him, who is going to want to yeah. fight Michael Moore? He's like the last guy in the book that you would pick to fight if you didn't have to fight him. So he's in a very difficult position in a sense. The fact that he showed guts, heart, and courage tonight getting up after all those knockdowns, that bodes well for Michael Moore. Well, it was a fantastic fight, a fantastic heavyweight fight that everyone, uh, if you watched it, certainly enjoyed. The first Southpaw heavyweight title holder no longer holds his title. Evander Holyfield beats Michael Moore in an eighth-round technical knockout as Moore, who was knocked down five times in this fight, did not answer the bell for the ninth round. We will have more on this later on SportsCenter, later on. Now back to the studio. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Welcome to the ESPN Newsroom. I'm Mike Greenberg. We'll take a short time out and continue with our post-fight coverage right here on ESPN and ESPN News in just a moment. your own shoe, huh? So, this kid plays the NBA. So you want to see that on the dog. Just believe in yourself.
experienced. Uh, just pass the bar. Get the hell out of here. Get a license. But they're perfectly matched. Her son is dying, and the insurance company won't pay for his treatment. For the fight of their lives. We should have a game plan. It seemed that sometimes in the fight, he never had a game plan. He, uh, he started with his movement and gave uh, Michael Moore some rhythm. I think that really helps his case a lot. The fact that he was cut early in the fight, did Evander need to knock Moore out to win this fight, do you think? Well, I didn't think that the, uh, the cut was too bad, but it definitely uh, affected him in, in a little way. He realized that he was cut. Uh, sometimes during the fight, he was pawing at it, and uh, you could say he noticed that he was cut. Uh, basically, he just went out there and did what he had to do. Now, you and I spoke moments before this fight, and you told me that you did prefer the outcome that we had Holyfield winning, partly because you could make more money facing Holyfield. Yeah, I think uh, the world wants to see a matchup between Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. This is uh, a great fight. The hype has already started, so I'm looking forward to it. Stylistically, what could we expect in a matchup between you two? Uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. Um, I think my up... Uh, boxing style uh, with arsenal filled with punches I can throw at any given moment and then you have Evander Holyfield he's got a heart of a, of a, of a tiger in there and basically he's going to give you all of it and he's walking with God so you know uh, uh, that's another war upon itself as well so I think I think it's going to be a great matchup when we, we do finally meet up and when is that sometime sometime early next year I think uh, the promoter is going to put that together. I know the two uh, participants are definitely willing, and uh, hopefully the keeping the politics out of the way, the fight will get together. And who will win? Lennox Lewis. I'm very confident. I mean, the fact that Holyfield is such a warrior and the fact that we've seen him, even at this age, with seemingly more power than maybe earlier in his career, is he the most formidable guy that you have faced? Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to facing him. I realize that uh, Evander Holyfield's never seen nothing like Lennox Lewis, and it's going to be quite a shock for him when he steps in the ring and sees a six-foot guy standing across the ring at him that can punch hard and has great movement and speed. All right, thank you very much, Lennox. Thank you. WBC heavyweight champ Lennox Lewis, and they'll get it on, he says, sometime early 1998. Back to you. All right, Mark, thank you very much. That certainly would be the fight everyone wants to see. Again, we'll take you to the post-fight press conferences as soon as they begin. Meanwhile, we tell you ESPN's Al Morgani has learned that Jacques Demers will be the next head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning pending ownership approval. The head coaching job at Tampa would be Demers' fifth following his stints in Montreal, Detroit, St. Louis, and Quebec. He could be behind the benches soon as Tuesday night. Meanwhile, the Lightning were in San Jose. Second period score was Jeff Friesen up the ice. Banks it off of Alexander Salavanov's skate for the goal. Sharks up one to nothing. They would wind up winning it by a final score of three to one, ending a five-game winless skid. While elsewhere, Nikolai Habibulin registering his first whitewash of the season. Keith Kachuk, a pair of goals. Jeremy Roenick with two assists as the Coyotes knock off the Maple Leafs. The Ducks and Canucks in Vancouver. Alexander Mogilny back. Would he be better than ever? Ending his holdout. Third period. Ducks up 2-1. Tamu Solani on a rush in on Kirk McLean, and he beats him. Solani now has goals in 10 straight games and 15 on the year. 